everybody. My name is Lars Hogum. I'm an intern doctor in uh, Olesen, Norway. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, two quite common EKG strips and uh, how to interpret them uh, step by step. Alright, at first I just want to recommend you guys uh, go pick up um, our uh, kind of method chart that we're going to use uh, for this uh, session. You can find it at our webpage www.lubekg.org. Alright, so the five steps are the same uh, same ones we always use. Um, at first we determine heart rate, then the rhythm and intervals, then cardiac access, then hypertrophy and workload distribution, and finally ischemia. Uh, you'll find uh, other videos in our channel detailing uh, this step-by-step -step, uh, process of EKG reading. So first, uh, this is our uh, uh, first EKG strip um, uh, of the day. It's a 25 millimeter per second speed, which means that one of these um, 5 by 5 big blocks uh, along the um, x-axis equals uh, 200 milliseconds. So the first we do is to uh, determine how fast uh, the heart beats. So let's see. Jumping boxes, 300, 150, 175, a little bit more, possibly 80. All right. So then uh, the next step is to uh, determine um, uh, the rhythm. It seems like a sinus rhythm. We have P waves preceding every QRS complex. It's also regular and uh, seemingly a supraventricular uh, rhythm due to the narrowness of the QRS complexes. All right, so let's check out the intervals. Let's see PR. Here it is more or less on the line, maybe a little bit ahead. And it's somewhat less than 200 milliseconds, maybe 180 milliseconds. Well within normal limits. Uh, the QRSs are about half a big block, which uh, equals um, about 100 milliseconds. And then finally, let's check the QT time. Uh, 200, uh, 300, and, and start a little bit before, maybe 380 here. All right. So then the third step is to determine axis. Let's see, it's a positive uh, QRS complex in 1 and positive QRS complex in AVF, which means that we have a normal axis, but uh, we see that uh, there's no real isoelectric candidates, maybe 1. Let's also see 2 and 3 are very positive QRSs, which means that we have an axis which is absolutely normal, but probably tilt a little bit downward. So maybe uh, more or less uh, plus 70, 80 degrees. Alright, so the fourth step is now to see if the R wave grows from V1 towards V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. It seems like it does. Uh, it becomes more and more dominant in its curse complex, which is a normal progression. And then finally, the fifth step is to check for ischemia. Let's see. Inverted T waves, quick. No, no. Oh, AVR. It is normal because of the placement of the AVR lead. Let's see. There's possibly a small ST elevation, one millimeter in V1. Uh, maybe a slight elevation here, but you see it has this benign morphology of the ST segment following, so this is not a significant ST elevation. This looks fine. Remember, it's the J point that we're looking at. All right, so no significant signs of ischemia, isolated finding in V1. Remember, you need the findings in two adjacent leads or more for findings to be significant. So this is an example of a completely normal EKG. All right, now on to our second EKG, also 25 uh, millimeter per second. Still one big box, five by five millimeter, is here 200 milliseconds along the, the X uh, axis. Alright, so let's see how fast this heart beats. Let's see, let's find the shortest. 300, 150. And then let's see the longest, uh, possibly here. 300, 150, 100. So uh, 250, more or less, uh, divided uh, by 2. 125, more or less. Let's see, 115, okay. And now about the rhythm, it's uh, clearly irregular. It also looks like a supraventricular rhythm because it has these narrow QRS complexes. Uh, there's no P waves as far as I can identify. Okay, 
so no PR interval. The QRS, let's see, it's about 100 milliseconds because it's half a big block. Let's see the QT time, all right here, 200, and then about half a big block, 100 to the end of the T wave, so about 300 milliseconds. So this is a supraventricular irregular tachycardia, very suspicious of uh, atrial uh, fibrillation. All right, now the axis, let's see. Uh, oh, it's isoelectric in um, one. Let's see, AVF is positive. So it's probably a plus 90 degree uh, axis. Now, signs of hypertrophy, let's see. The R wave becomes uh, increasingly dominant from the right side of the heart to the left. So this is a normal R wave progression. Now let's look for uh, signs of um, ischemia. Let's see. One, T wave looks good. Two, T wave looks good. Three, possibly inverted T. AVR, inverted because of its uh, position. Uh, AVL looks fine. AVF, possibly inverted T. So we have two possibly inverted T's in the lower uh, walls of the heart. Uh, V1 looks good. J point here is online with the isometric uh, line. Looks good. Looks good. So we might have a slight inferior wall ischemia, AVF and 3. Confirmatory blood work could be indicated here. Okay, so this is uh, an example of um, atrial uh, fibrillation with a rapid um, uh, ventricular uh, response. Thank you guys for watching and uh, see you soon.